Hello, my name is Adi Oja, and I'm going to be presenting to you today some research in reinforcement learning. The title of our paper is Finite Reward Automaton Inference and Reinforcement Learning Using Queries and Counterexamples. I can't wait to dive into this. Let's set the framework for our paper. In recent years, deep reinforcement learning has achieved human level performance in a variety of fields. To give one example, AlphaGo is a program that can play the game of Go better than the best human player in the world. However, this comes with a couple of problems. First, often deep reinforcement learning algorithms require a lot of data exploration, which takes an extended amount of time. Second, it's hard to interpret what these machines are doing. How are they making decisions is a hard question to answer. Towards both these ends, we propose a solution using finite reward automatons. This is an example of a finite reward automaton. Now, what we will show you in this paper is that by using finite reward automatons and our new method, you can get a reinforcement learning algorithm that is faster and is more interpretable than common baseline algorithms today. As a basic outline of the presentation, we're gonna start by discussing Markov decision processes and finite reward automaton. We'll discuss how finite reward automaton can express a variety of reward functions. Then we'll go into our algorithm and finally conclude with our experimental results. Let's talk about Markov decision processes and finite reward automatons. To introduce these two concepts, I'm gonna give two examples. The first is of a Markov decision process. Say you have a robot in your office and you want this robot to get you coffee and then get you the files you need. In order to incentivize the robot to do this task, you give it a reward of one if it gets you both the coffee and the files, and you give it a reward of zero otherwise. Now let's talk about a finite reward automaton. It's an automaton that represents the rewards of any scenario. Let's walk through this reward automaton. We start in state zero. If we get coffee, we move to the next state. If we don't, we stay in this state. In both cases, we get a reward of zero. Once we're in state one, if we don't get files, we stay in this state. And if we get files, we move to the final state, W2. This is the termination state. Now, once we get to this state, we actually get a reward of one once we get the files. Now, if you notice, both the MDP reward function and this finite reward automaton give rewards for similar actions. If you get coffee and get the files, both this function and this automaton will give you a reward of one. If you don't get coffee, but get the files, both of them will give you a reward of zero. When this happens, when both a reward function and an automaton have the same rewards, we say that the reward automaton encodes the MDP reward function. Now, this is important for reinforcement learning. In a reinforcement learning scenario, we don't know, or the agent doesn't know, what the reward function is, and it needs to figure it out somehow. Our algorithm allows the agent to infer a finite reward automaton that encodes this reward function. Once it's able to figure out what that reward automaton is, it uses that automaton for reinforcement learning. And this has a powerful impact. Now, before we go to our algorithm, some of you may have the question, why are we using finite reward automaton? Why is that the best thing to use? After all, how can you be so sure that this automaton can encode MDP reward functions. Could it be, is it always possible that for any MDP reward function, we can encode it with the finite reward automaton? The answer is yes. We show in our paper that for any finite valued non-Markovian reward function, you can get an FRA or a finite reward automaton that can encode the rewards from that reward function. And this makes it powerful because any situation that can be modeled by a finite valued non-Markovian reward function can use our method because we know that there will be a finite reward automaton that can encode our function. 
with that, we're done with the finite row order automatons, and we can now move on to our algorithm. Again, it's important to note that our algorithm's goal is to infer a finite reward automaton that encodes the MDP's non-Markovian reward function. The basis for our approach is based in L-star learning, a technique developed by Angwin in 1987. In this approach, there are two systems, a teacher and a student. The job of the student is to learn from the teacher by asking questions. In our scenario, the teacher is done by two reinforcement learning engines, both of which perform Q learning. The student is called the inference engine, and it can ask one of two questions. The first question is called a membership query. It asks, do these actions get me this reward? For example, does going to A, then B, and then C get me a reward of zero or one? The second question is called an equivalence query. The student can infer a finite reward automaton and ask the teacher, is this the correct reward automaton? Does it encode the MDP reward function? And then again, the teacher can answer yes or no. Let's get a more granular view by moving to this diagram. What we can see here in the middle is an inference engine marked by the student. And we have two teachers, one reinforcement learning engine that answers equivalence queries, and another reinforcement learning engine that answers membership queries. Let's detail the process. We start off with a random policy, and the inference engine decides whether or not it can infer a finite reward automaton. If it can't, then it asks a series of membership queries. Again, do these set of actions give me a reward of zero or one? If what we do then is the RL engine will perform RL and give the rewards back to the inference engine. In other words, it'll tell it, well, when we did this action, we didn't get a reward of zero or we did get a reward of one, et cetera. We keep on asking these questions until eventually the inference engine says, I can infer a finite reward automaton. Then it asks an equivalence query. So say that it's asked enough reward, um, membership queries, the inference engine may come up with the following hypothesis reward automaton. Once it has this hypothesis of reward automaton, it's gonna move to a, an equivalence query. Now this RL engine will perform RL, and as long as it doesn't run into any problems, it'll continue performing RL until we have convergence. But say that it incurs a problem. For example, say that during reinforcement learning, we find that if I get coffee and then get the files, I get a reward of zero. Well, that doesn't match up with this reward function. This reward function says, sorry, this finite reward automaton says that if I get coffee and then get files, I get a reward of one. So these two do not match, and therefore our finite reward automaton is incorrect. What the RL engine would do is return this trace or counterexample, coffee files reward of zero to the inference engine. The inference engine would use that to generate more equip more membership queries, and the process repeats. It asks membership queries until it has a hypothesis and then it asks an equivalence query to test the hypothesis FRA. Now there's another thing I wanna mention about these two RL engines. They again have two different purposes and therefore they use two different Q functions. As I mentioned before, each RL engine performs Q learning to answer their respective queries. The membership Q function that's used for membership queries has a job of focusing on exploration. We want this Q function to explore most of the sample space so that it can answer as many membership queries as fast as it can. The equivalence query Q function is a little different. Its focus is on finding the optimal policy. It wants to do RL until we converge to the optimal policy. So because they have two different functions, we separate the RL engines into two distinct groups. The final thing I wanna note about the membership query RL engine 
is that we set a time limit for how long it takes to answer a membership query. This limit is called C. If after C episodes, we still haven't answered a membership query, we still haven't found that trace or found that set of actions, so we don't know whether or not it gives a reward of zero or one, we answer no. We say that you don't get a reward of zero or you don't get a reward of one. However, if later on in the learning process, we encounter that trace, we'll correct our answer. So this allows us to be a bit more efficient. With that, we've now concluded talking about our algorithm. And now we're ready to move on to the results. So for our results, we tested our algorithm in two case studies. The first is Office World. This is a scenario where you're in an office and you have a robot that's supposed to get things for you. The robot is represented by the triangle. The robot or agent is represented by the triangle. The letter A represents coffee. Letter B represents a filing system, and letter C represents a pen. We have the agent perform a variety of tasks. For example, A, B, A, C means get coffee, get a file, get coffee again, and then get a pen. And similarly for the other tasks. Our second case study is called Craft World. In Craft World, this simulates a Minecraft environment where the agent has to build a hammer, excuse me, and build a sphere. Now let's dive in to what other algorithms we used. We compared our algorithm against JIRP and LRM and to state-of-the-art finite reward automaton learning systems and PPO2, which is a deep reinforcement learning algorithm. The following is a note on our graphs. The graphs that I'm about to show you show the rewards attained from 10 independent trial runs where we average the rewards every 10 training steps. Now let's look at some graphs. This is for Office World Task 1. As you can see, our approach in green converges to an optimal solution, while the other algorithms don't even converge to an optimal solution. We see a similar story with Task 2 in Office World. We converge to an optimal solution while the other tasks do not. An optimal solution is indicated by a solid green line. So in this case, LRM did not obtain an optimal solution. Although its line is near one, this red shaded region shows that in some trials, it didn't converge to an optimal policy. Similarly, in task three, we converge to a policy while LRM and PPO2 do not. JIRP is able to converge to a policy but it takes around five, uh, about half a million more training steps to do so. So again, our algorithm is much faster and it's much more interpretable because we're using finite reward automatons. Finally, we have the craft world scenario. Again, we converge while others do not and same with making a sphere. Remember, our these show that our algorithms are faster and the fact that we're using finite reward automatons to distill the information that the agent is learning about its system shows that they are more interpretable. So in conclusion, in this paper, we propose a new method that actively infers finite reward automatons. We show that the method is faster and more interpretable than other baseline methods. We also show that finite reward automatons can encode any finite valued non-Markovian reward function. In the future, there's some questions we can ask. What if our teacher is sometimes incorrect? It doesn't always answer membership queries accurately. And what if we had multiple agents all working together towards a common goal? These are future research areas that we can explore. I'd like to thank you for listening and taking the time to listen to our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.